My name is Hannah, and this is my Year of Less Stuff. Hey y'all, welcome to my YouTube video, 10 Things That I Can't Live Without. Credit where credit is due, I totally stole this idea from Michelle Wong. She just posted a video with this exact title, this exact theme, and I saw it and I was like, that is such a great idea for a YouTube video. It just made me immediately want to do it. Michelle's video was vlog style, and I'm not doing it vlog style. I just made a list of 10 things that I can't live without, and most of them I have around me, and I'm, I'm going to go through them and show them to you. Of course, the title is superlative. Obviously, I can live without these things, especially the things that I listed. I mean, I, I didn't write like water, oxygen, food on my list. Those are the things we really can't live without. So don't get me wrong. I understand that it's kind of a dramatic thing to title a video that you then are going to go on to talk, talk in about like, you know, earrings and robes and stuff like that. Spoiler alert, earrings and robes. Um, but you get what I'm saying. It's 10 things that I can't live without like in the YouTube sphere, in, in the lifestyle sphere, in the beauty sphere, etc. Hyperbolic, that was what I was trying to say. I think I used the word superlative. The title is hyperbolic. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I am Hannah. I love beautiful things and beauty products, but my financial health is also really important to me. So on my channel, I'm trying to strike that balance between valuing and appreciating beautiful things, reviewing them, talking with you about them, but not creating an environment that normalizes overspending on them because I've been down that road before and it was not fun and it took me a long time to recover from that. So if that sounds like content that you would like to see, please subscribe to my channel. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Speaking as I was before we transitioned to the meat of the video about not normalizing overspending, I just need to put it right up front here that this is a video about stuff. It's 10 things that I can't live without. It's right there in the title. And this is the kind of video that I think can cause some people to just want to immediately click through all the links and buy all of the stuff. If you have that instinct, I just want to issue a little disclaimer here. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check in with your bank account, check in with your financial goals. If you see me talking about something that really will improve your life and that you can afford and that all things considered will be a boon to you, then I'm happy to be able to introduce it to you. But there's a fine line sometimes I think between that and being like, oh my gosh, I can't live without those 10 things either. And if Hannah says they're great, then I'm going to buy them and I'm going to buy them in a cloud of like ignoring my own financial health because I love going into that cloud because it's a little reprieve from reality. If you're tempted to go into that cloud and buy all the things, maybe one thing that you could do is to make your own list of 10 things that you can't live without that you already have. Dwell in that list for a little while, appreciate your own list, and maybe even put your list in the comments down below um, and let that be your first act before you then go on to decide that you need the 10 things that I can't live without. Part of why I wanted to make this list is because it's a form of appreciation. It's really fun to look around and be like, man, I'm so glad I have you 10 things. In a way, in a hyperbolic way, <laughs> I couldn't live without you. In no particular order, except for the first thing that I came up with when I started making this list sprung to my mind immediately for a reason. It's because it's the thing that I use as much as anything in my life. I mean, it, these, it's, it's in no particular order, but these are the winners, right? So this is number one, and then the other nine are in no particular order. These are my noise canceling wireless headphones. And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link the pair that I had originally because when it first became clear years ago that a pair of wireless noise canceling headphones would be a boon to me, like would literally transform <laughs> the landscape of my life. The first pair that I purchased was um, really quite inexpensive, but also quite good. They were like on the low end for high functioning, noise canceling wireless headphones, Bluetooth headphones. And I wore those ones to pieces. Like I used them until like the buttons were worn down and the, the, the things had all broken off and were all taped back on. I mean, they were completely useless by the end. And then the ver their very last act was to break, like the headphone entirely broke off of one side of it. And that was when I purchased these. And by that time I had become aware that 
this was something that I would depend on so much in my everyday life that I was gonna have them on my head like all the time that I felt more comfortable investing in these. But I purchased these when they were on an extreme sale. I can't remember what the event was, but it was some kind of like yearly sale event. I think that they might even have been something like half off, um, but they were still over $100 if I remember correctly. In the hyperbolic world of this video, I can't live without them. I mean, it's the kind of thing that if they broke or if I lost them, I would replace them in a heartbeat. Maybe not the same pair if I had to pay full price for them, but I would decide how much I felt comfortable spending and then I would spend that entire amount on the best pair that I could possibly find. The noise canceling capability of these is very good. Mine are the Plantronics Backbeat Pro or something like that. I'm not telling you that these are the best. These are just the ones I decided to buy under the conditions. It's crucial, I feel like, in quarantine, where I'm quarantined with another person. Sometimes I'll just put them on without music and without even turning on the noise canceling, just to muffle the sound of Joe chewing when he's eating his breakfast and nothing else is going on in the house. Like, I just, I depend on them so heavily. And I wear them when I'm cooking, and I wear them when I'm editing, I wear them when I'm working out. They're just the best. And I also do love that they muffle the noise, the roar from outside when it gets really loud living in downtown Los Angeles. Moving on, in no particular order, I weirdly thought of my huggy earrings. I was trying to think of some things in like the more lifestyle sphere, some things in the sort of beauty and accessory sphere. And when I started tracing my mind through like my closet and my jewelry and all that stuff, I thought about these huggies because they're in my ear all the time. Like the these top two ones, the cartilage piercings, especially this top one with the green jewel in it. I love it so much and I love the way that it looks in that top cartilage piercing. As soon as I got it, I put it in and I've never taken it out. And obviously it's like, it's like a thing that I could live without, but I just feel like it's sort of become a part of my body and I'm so happy that it's there. And it is my constant companion in the way that the headphones are, right? It's like, it's in my ear all the time. It's, it's on my body all the time. And I really, really love that. It was sent to me as PR by a little company called Aurelia London. They make the most beautiful, dainty, and high quality huggies, which is what these are called, like the little earrings that hug your ear, that I've ever seen. I absolutely love them. These are the other ones that I really love. I like the thickness of these bands, and then I like these shimmery little opalescent stones that are set into them. They look really, really cute in any of the holes in my ears. I have four holes in each lobe and then I have these two cartilage piercings. They're better lower down, but I think because they're so thick than they are like way up here in the, the highest of my lobe piercings. So I don't have them in all the time because I'm often switching out my lowest lobe piercing for like a bigger or a more statement earring. But I love the little green one in the top and I also really, really love these. Very impressed by Aurelia London and I just feel like those little huggies are like one of my favorite little things that I depend on having to keep my ear game strong. And you know, I can't live without a strong ear game. So the other one, the next one on the list is also earrings. It's these Ana Luisa hoops. I've had them for, it feels like forever now, but since I first did a sponsored video with Ana Luisa, which this one is not, I haven't worked with them in ages, but I did work with them a couple times back in the day and they sent me these hoops. These are the Tia mediums and these are the Tia larges. And the reason I'm saying I can't live without them is that whenever I feel like I just need a little something, but I don't want it to be too formal, like a little something to make an outfit have a, a bit more polish, uh, a bit more bling, you know what I mean? Just like a little something they're always like more perfect than any other earrings that I have. And most of my earrings are like statement costume jewelry. You know, I like that flare. I like that weird shaped stuff protruding from the earlobes. And so it might be partly just because these are my most kind of practical, classy jewelry that's not too formal. It's also their quality. They just, they, they look the way that they looked the day that they were born. Like they, they haven't changed a bit. They haven't tarnished at all. They haven't gotten nicked or anything. They're just so beautiful and I depend on them. And this is another thing that I feel like if somehow I lost them or lost one, I would want to replace them immediately. I think my code with Ana Luisa is still good. So I'll put that down below. But the last time I checked, they, the Tia mediums were out of stock, but they look like they're gonna come back in stock. They are my favorites. The Tia large, I don't even see them on the website anymore. So I don't know if they have replaced them with other earrings, but they do have a lot of simple, sturdy gold hoops. And I can only assume that the quality is as good 
as the quality of these. All right, we're moving a little bit more into like lifestyle things. I didn't include any makeup on this video because I just talk about my makeup all the time. I feel like half of you out there could probably make a list of the makeup that I can't live without. And I've been doing it a lot lately too. I've really been talking a lot about my same old standard products and I've been doing a lot of get ready with me videos with my same old standard products. So if you want to know what makeup I can live without, then just watch my most recent get ready with me and it'll be in there. This I just thought of as I was wandering through my brain through <laughs> wandering my brain through my day and just thinking about the little things that I do every day that I use, that I touch, that I that I take. This is a supplement. It's a CBD supplement. And I've talked before about CBD supplements here on my channel because I was taking the same one for a long time. That's not this one. It was called it's called Mondo and it's a powder. It's just CBD. So it doesn't make you high. It's just an anxiety thing. It just helps calm down one's anxiety. The supplement that I was using before, Mondo, I really loved, but I think they're having sourcing issues or production issues. It just wasn't reliable. So I went to this one. It's by Prana and it's CBD sublingual drops. I'm not sure about accessibility for this. It's easy to buy this kind of thing in California. I'll see if I can link it down below or if I can find any information about this brand. I really do like this one as well. I like it as well as I liked Mondo. But if this is really just a general recommendation if you have constant anxiety and if you are the kind of person who has anxiety about your anxiety, like that self-punishing, the second arrow, you know what I mean? Like you feel bad and then you immediately punish yourself for feeling bad because you conceive of yourself as someone who should be strong enough or put together enough to not feel bad. So you feel like you're failing by feeling bad and then you've doubled down on how bad you feel. If that's you and you've never tried CBD, I highly recommend it because that's me. A CBD supplement always really helps me when I take it consistently. I find that that second arrow is less prone to be loosed from its bow. I'm less prone, I still feel my feelings, you know what I mean? It doesn't like dull my feelings and, and mean that I don't have the emotion, the up and down emotions that I have. I'm just less prone to double down on my negative emotions and like spiral down than I am when I'm not taking it. And it also helps with headaches for me. I mean, your mileage may vary, but I find that those sort of like persistent achy headaches that I often wake up with, I don't get them when I'm consistently microdosing with CBD. So that's something that has helped me out a lot to the point where I feel like I can't live without it. Real talk, these next two, <laughs> these next two are real talk. My lightweight robes, I put them all into one category and my bralettes are in another category. I have two of my lightweight robes here. You guys have seen them. This is a cotton robe from Long Tall Sally. I love it because it's designed specifically for tall women. The arms come all the way down to my wrists and it's floor length and it literally goes all the way down to the floor. But the thing that's great about it is that it's crisp cotton. It's just plain old crisp cotton, like a quilting cotton or something. It's not super soft and cozy. It's not like synthetic, fuzzy, microfiber towel. It's not like that. It's just really straight up natural fiber, crisp cotton. So it can get a little crunchy. If you don't like that, you wouldn't like a robe like this. But I love that. I love the feeling of like a, a starchy, crispy cotton. I don't put this in the dryer. I just hang it to dry. So as soon as it's totally dry after it's been washed, it does feel crunchy. It feels like something fresh off the line, you know, fresh off the, the laundry line. But I love that feeling. It's crisp. It's it's soft against my skin, even though it's got a little bit of a stiff drape. And it just feels like such a beautiful item to me. I absolutely love it. I am always wearing a robe. So I have this one. I have this extremely old cotton terry cloth. Like you can't see anything. It's just a black blob in the screen. It's not the kind of terry cloth that has a uh, little bit sticking up, like that has pile. It's totally shapeless and super old. It's like probably like a decade old. And then I have that silk bed jacket that is another lightweight robe. I just love having a robe that is as lightweight as something like a t-shirt or just a straight cotton blouse but that I can wrap my whole body in and I live in them. So that's why they made it onto this list of things that I couldn't live without. I replaced almost all my bras at the very beginning of the year and I talked at that time about how happy they make me feel. When I open my little drawer and they're all lined up in a row, I have about maybe eight to 10 bras right now and they're all like this. That has not changed. I haven't gotten used to them. 
meaning I haven't started taking them for granted. Every time I put one on, I'm like, I'm so happy that I invested that money, that part of, it wasn't my budget actually, it was replacements. Um, but it was a bit, especially coming off of my strict budget year, it was a bit much to buy like, four, I think four or five of these bras at one time. And I had to kind of like hold my tongue, bite my bullet. I don't know, <laughs> I had to kind of swallow my pill to do it. But I, I am so glad that I did it because I just feel like they are a constant source of happiness because they're very practical, but they're also very beautiful. And in this like straightforward, simple way that makes me feel good and they, they harmonize with my clothing. And it's just this sweet moment every day where I'm like, I feel like I'm taking care of myself by owning and wearing these bras. So I have two brands that I really love. This one is a perfect example because it's the most simple. It's just a little band that goes around, very spare. You know what I mean? It's like a very spare top. I have this in black and I also have it in white. This is from a brand called Sloan and Tate. And it's a small brand made in Los Angeles and they often have great sales and the, they're reasonably priced, I feel, to begin with for a very nice bra of this quality. But my favorite brand for bras is Base Range. Those are my absolute favorite bras, the best of the best. I'm wearing one right now and I think the rest are in the laundry classic because I always wear them as soon as they're clean. Those are more expensive, so I'm happy to be able to offer an alternative, which is Sloan and Tate. They, in my experience, they wear out more quickly and they don't tend to be quite as comfortable over the long haul of the day. The ones from Base Range, especially the X bra, oh my gosh, I just, it feels like nothing. I absolutely love it. And I know that not everyone can wear little, barely there bras like this but this video is about the things that I can't live without. So there you go. I freaking love my bras. Okay, the next one on the list is texturizing shampoo. And it's perfect that I'm filming this video today because I washed my hair last night and I haven't put anything in it yet. My hair is definitely thicker. It has more body and more lift from the root and more curl. Like you see these bits, these PC bits, how they're kind of like clinging to each other and, and waving. If I wash my hair with just any old shampoo, and especially if it's kind of like an, a nasty shampoo, if it has, if it has like a, a lot of things that can strip the hair in it, I don't get these results. It will be like weird and silky and sort of, and sort of like flat to my head. It might have body on the first day, but then it will flatten and it won't have this like wavy texture. When I first discovered texturizing shampoos, two-in-one shampoos that are supposed to be used without a conditioner after them, and that kind of put grit into your hair to make it more textured and give it more volume. The first one I discovered was by IGK. It was their shampoo called 1995. It used to be carried in Sephora, and I found it at that time, I think, when it was first being carried in Sephora. And it was a total revelation to me. It's a, it has a weird snot-like consistency. It has diachotomous earth in it, so it, it's got clay, and the clay sort of deposits at the roots, helps to absorb oil throughout the week for me, because I only wash my hair once a week. And it also just helps to kind of give your hair some grit before you even treat it with product afterwards. So I loved that one. I loved that one by IGK, and I've recommended it a lot on my channel, but I think it's been discontinued. So when I was looking for a replacement, I tried this one, which is the R & Co Cactus Texturizing Shampoo. It's the exact same deal. It, it's got a little bit less of a snot like consistency. It's a little bit more, it has more shape. When you blurt it out, it has a little bit more shape. It doesn't, it's not a puddle. It's like a little cream and it smells better to me than the one from IGK did. It's got, it, it's like they tried to overlay the weird earthy smell of it with uh, kind of like a fresh herbal grassy smell. So it's not the best. Joe doesn't like the way that it smells, but he does use it. He uses it, which is so shocking. He usually, he doesn't wash his hair very often and usually he's just like, whatever. Um, but he used this one time when he didn't have anything else. And then the next time he was going to wash his hair, he was like, Hey, do we still have that cactus shampoo? And I was like, Yes, we do. And you better believe I'm going to tell my subscribers that you asked for it. So he doesn't like the smell, but he does like the effect. And um, it also has diachotomous earth in it. it. It also has clay. It's the exact same thing. It's just um, from a different brand. I like this one better than I like than I liked the one from IGK. But what I'm saying is that this genre of shampoo, which is clearly being adopted across brands, like it, it's not just this one that I can't live without. It's, it's the fact that this is now a thing that's being created, that there are people out there who understand 
that people like me don't want to condition our hairs and we don't want our hairs to be silky and flowy and feel like they're coated with silicone after we wash them. We want them to feel grippy and gritty and like we washed them in a sandy creek. And I just can't live without a product that makes it feel like I wash my hair in a sandy creek. All right, sticking with the hair situation, and then we're gonna move on to lifestyle recommendations that I'm really excited to tell you. These little things, which I talked about this year already because I purchased them as replacements, I think, at some point, or maybe I spent, I may have spent my budget on them. I can't really remember what the situation was. It, everything has become so abstract in quarantine time. My camera battery just died on me without warning. I don't know where it's coming from when it does that. Anyway, I was saying that I have the, the hair, the ones with the ears little bands of the ears, which are very, very cute, but the band is super thin. And at some point last year, I got a facial or a massage or something at a Korean spa that's near downtown. And they gave me a hairband like this that had a wide and very elastic, scrunchy band. And it was like a total revelation to me because it, it sucks to my head and it holds all my hair back so so well and it's it feels like you're wearing almost like a towel wrapped around your head and then there's cute bow on the top so after months and months of always wanting to use that one and feeling less and less excited about my little cat ear ones because they're just so much less useful i got the brainwave to go on online and see if i could find these and I did, I found a four pack for like $10. The reason I'm saying that I can't live without them is that I wear, I use one every day. And it's the kind of thing when all four are dirty, it sucks so much. So I'm always trying to make sure that they're in the wash, they're being washed. And when I have to default to, I think I still have two of the cat ones. When I use all of these up and I'm using the cat ones, oh no, I, so I have the four that I bought and I also have still have the one that they gave me at the spa. So I have five. So I can usually get one washed in time to usually be using them. But when they're all five dirty and I have to use the cat ones, I'm always just like, ah, oh, they're so much less comfortable. They do so much less of a good job. I just feel like I kind of can't live without these guys. I'm really excited about the last two because they are outside of this like beauty realm. Not everything has been in the beauty realm, but you know what I'm saying. I, I cast my mind over like other areas areas of my life. This is one thing that I thought of. This is a cooking thing. Uh, but I, I think it's good to talk about because I do love to cook. I cook a lot. I've had a lot of experiences with different kinds of cookware. I know what I like and at this point I've kind of curated my cookware to suit me very very well. But when I decided that I wanted a thing like this, do you hear that? When I decided that I wanted a thing like this. When I decided that I wanted a thing like this, I was like, why did it take me so long to decide? Because it's exceedingly useful. This is a very, very big pan. It's not a pot. It does have a lid. I think technically it's a braising pan, and I do like that it has a lid because I can start cooking things on the surface of the oven and then I can finish them in the oven if there are things that need to be finished with a lid. That's very useful. But it's actually the size and the shape of this that I was after when I sought it out. It's a very, very big pan. I think it's a 10 quart pan. And if you look for 10 quart cookware, you'll see a lot of pots. Like it's not that hard to find a 10 quart pot that's smaller at the base than this is, but taller. But I specifically wanted a 10 quart pan because I wanted something where I could like cook a bunch of stuff all laid out, like saute a bunch of stuff that's all laid out, but not such a shallow frying pan that I couldn't then add like a bunch of liquid into it. It just felt like such a brainwave when we finally got it. I think that we found, I was looking for something like that and I think that we found it at Costco. So we, I remember Joe and I buying it for like a shockingly low price. It's very beautiful. I'll try to find this one. Try triple clad tramonita. I don't even know what it is. I'll try to find this one and link it down below. But it's not about this exact pan, as with everything. It's about it's it's about the idea of thinking about your needs when you're cooking. And if especially if you're in quarantine and you're doing more cooking now than you usually do, and you're kind of like, ah, like I always I think I think of things like having a a pasta pot that's 
too small, like it doesn't hold enough water to appropriately cook like a whole box of pasta or something. I find that those things, if you can find something that suits your needs but that's relatively inexpensive, it can be really, really life-changing to like zero in on which kinds of pots and pans would truly be the most useful for you. I think that for me, when things make cooking easier, it really improves my life dramatically because I want to continue to love cooking. I don't want to feel like I'm fighting against my circumstances fighting against my tools and trying to make them do what they're not designed to do when I'm cooking. I really want to feel like I have the leeway to like make the things that I want to make in the way that's the most elegant and the easiest. And for me, for some reason, it might be because I do a lot of like stews and sauces and sauteing a bunch of like onions and mushrooms and then adding in like a ground meat or like chicken thighs or something and then putting liquid in and cooking it all together. For me, that, that's the kind of thing I cook like almost constantly and, and this kind of pan works for that so much better than one with a smaller base and taller sides would work. So. I, funnily enough, like I feel very strongly that I couldn't live without this pan. At least I couldn't live the life I'm living now without this pan. Okay, and the last one is something I can't bring it. I decided not to take it out of my lamp and bring it over here. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before on my channel, but in my bedside lamp, I have a light bulb that doesn't emit any blue light. It's an orange, it's an amber bulb. I think that's what they're called. It's an amber bulb and it casts a very dim orange light that's bright enough for me to read by, but it doesn't have any blue light in it, so it doesn't trick the eye and trick the brain into thinking that it's morning. It doesn't wake up my brain. And I'm pretty susceptible to blue light at night. It's like if I take my computer into bed or my phone, especially if I don't turn on some kind of like orange amber light screen on them but even if I do I find that all that light right into my eyes and I'm trying to fall asleep inevitably keeps me awake no matter how tired I am it can also happen for me with a bedside lamp I think having just like a regular full spectrum light bulb in your bedside lamp when you're reading at night and having it on and having it like shine its light all around you and in your eyes I think it was a bit expensive I I mean it's more expensive than a regular light bulb I remember buying it back in the day it might have been something like $20, but it was so worth it. And I will absolutely find the exact one that I bought and link that one down below because that's something that I actually do heartily recommend to everyone. Big fan of the Amber Bowl, couldn't live without it. And that is it. That is my video about the 10 things that sprung to mind when I sat down to make a list of what I couldn't live without. Again, I would very much like to see your lists. And I think that making a list and, and being like, oh yeah, I actually actually am surrounded by things that I find very, very useful. I actually do have what I need in all of these arenas. That can be a good antidote to the desire to spend and spend and spend. Of course, if you have problems that you haven't been able to solve and the things that I've shown you can be a solution to those problems, great, as long as you are pursuing them and purchasing them in a way that is within your means. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I can't wait to read your lists in the comments. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.